So first off, um, I'd like to introduce you to Councillor Peter Charles. We acknowledge the crew and thank them for their commitment, dedication and passion. Their tireless, yes. Their tireless efforts to preserve our heritage and environment for us and future generations as they are truly deserving of our support. A massive thank you to Peter Owen. Peter has been able to negotiate this first and remarkable visit to this of this iconic vessel here today. Yeah. So thank you, Gav. So next up we have um, a very special person, Uncle Bunna Laurie, an elder whale song man and um, an incredible oh, musician from the burning of the Malibu. I say when you're in my language, that means Welcome and greetings to, to all you brothers and sisters as we uh, refer to the whales, our family, our brothers and sisters. And my people, the Murning, were marine vets of the beginning of the time. And like what happened in the Gulf of Mexico six years on, all that's dead and destroyed will never return. And even the coast, it's going to really find it really hard to return again, to come back. Thank you very much. Thank you, Uncle Connor. I'd like to welcome the under. Uh, as be part of the fight for the bite, we're all very, we're all, we all feel very privileged of being here. And um, as I mentioned on the beach before, the crew is so excited to see so many people here on the beach, knowing um, that we don't do it alone, and that we have your support. And obviously, you have our support. So uh, I'm pretty sure that Jeff's going to be one of our speakers. So I just want to leave it here. I just talk for myself and for the crew. And thank you so much for this warm welcome. And together we can make this happen. Thank you. Managing Director of Sea Shepherd and the brains behind Operation Jittera. Thanks, TJ, and thanks, Wilderness, and all the volunteers that made today ha happen. And, uh, well, Victor Harbour has spoken. Look at this turnout today. It's incredible. It's inspiring. It's humbling for our Sea Shepherd crew, and it just lifts us to do more. You know, BP would have done all their consultation in the Gulf of Mexico. They would have had an environment plan 
in the Gulf of Mexico. And they said that they can drill in deep waters, deeper than they've ever done before. And look what they've done. Five million barrels of oil went into the ocean there. They sprayed dispersant, one called Corexit, which made the spill 52 times more toxic. The place is still a mess, six years on. Have they learned from that? No, they want to come into Australia's great Australian bite and drill for oil, not in waters shallower than the Gulf, but far deeper, far remote and much bigger and rougher seas, the roughest and biggest in the world. And we say no, we stand here today and we say no. We know that we can do this and thank you so much for getting on board the fight for the bite. We'll drive this all the way until BP pulls out of drilling full oil in the beautiful, great Australian bite. That's our spirit. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Nice one. So next up, we have Peter Owen. We cannot allow this company to do what they're proposing to do. We can't risk our wilderness we can't risk the livelihoods of people across southern Australia and nor can we continue to risk our climate. Trying to expand the fossil fuel industry at this point in history is not viable if we are going to have a livable climate into the future. And, and that is a very strong message that we all need to take away from here. The expansion of the fossil fuel industry must stop BP must not be given approval to do this, and the people of Australia need to say enough. Thank you for supporting us. Thanks, Pete. I'd now like to warmly welcome our newly elected Mayo MP, yeah. <laughs> Rebecca Sharkey. Good morning, everyone. I see so many familiar faces around today and, uh, and I see your faces because you came up to me during the election campaign and you told me how important this was. And uh, on behalf of uh, obviously myself and my Senate colleagues, uh, we are so concerned about the risk to our bite uh, if this goes ahead. And uh, Nick Xenophon, uh, as many of you know, in the last Senate, uh, with former Senator uh, Robert Sims, and I'd like to acknowledge Robert Sims, he's not here today, uh, but together uh, they put in a Senate inquiry and uh, that was to look at the risks uh, of such uh, a, really what I consider an awful proposal, uh, happening in our environment. Uh, the environmental risks, the social risks, the impact on jobs if we had such a spill. And uh, it's easy to say that BP have uh, moved on and they have new practices. So. Uh, what will we do? Uh, on behalf of my party, I can tell you that my Senate colleagues will, uh, when we get back into the Parliament, uh, we will reinstate uh, that Senate inquiry. And uh, more than that, uh, I was talking with Nick uh, on the drive down this morning as we were um, as we were going in and out of uh, reception. That's another thing I have to fix. Uh, yes. We will uh, make sure that we not just launch that Senate inquiry, but we will also uh, be putting up legislation uh, that will allow the federal government to veto an approval decision made by the uh, National Offshore Petroleum Safety and Environment Management Authority. And so I would just like to uh, close. It's very hard when you finish after such good speakers. Um, but I'd like to close and wish um, the Sea Shepherd, um, the Steve Irwin, the crew and all the passengers on board a very safe journey. And uh, we look forward to your reporting back on, on all the beauty and, uh, that you've seen. So thank you for everything you're doing. So thank you everyone for coming out. Um, I'm involved with the Friends of the Encounter Coast. We are a group that have come together in response to the proposed tuna cage they want to put just out here on the coastline. Um, we've been involved with this issue for a year now. Um, we're in court at the moment. In about four weeks' time, we'll be going to trial. Um, it's gone a bit quiet of late because we're getting ready for our legal case, but we are very confident that we've got a good uh, team of people, we've got great expert witnesses, we've seen what the um, Oceanic Victors 
applications are and you know, as reading through them we're pretty confident that we can protect our piece of coastline here. We're going now with Friends of Encounter are an incorporated body and we need help. We're get, we've got a raffle coming up soon and a few bits and bobs but come down and talk to us um, and we're in alliance with, the, with John Biggins who's involved with the Friends of Granite Island so we're really closely out there planting trees and you know we're surfers and swimmers and kayakers and sailors and we care about the ocean, we're connected to it and we love our whales. That's why Victor is unique. Where else can you stand on the shore and see whales breaching and bearing babies, you know, 100 k's from Adelaide? You can't do it. I just say thank you for everyone that's coming. Thank you so much to Sea Shepherd. Bunner, thank you for coming and speaking to us on our land. Rebecca, isn't it fabulous to have an MP that has a marine name? You know? <laughs> I love it, sharky, I love it. We don't want it to get too sharky out here, that's the other thing. But just a big thank you, and to Kate and Tammy Jo, brilliant job, uh, and yeah, thanks everyone for coming. Enjoy your ocean. Get started, the voice is going to go all right. All right, so who's going to